Thank you very much. So let's talk about nutrition. We hear about nutrition a lot. We hear about superfoods and we hear about healthy diets and about we are what we eat, maybe even on a daily basis. I'm very interested in nutrition and really try to understand how nutrition influences our health and well-being. I'm assuming as you sit here, you all feel pretty healthy today. You're quite a young audience, so I'm assuming I'm talking to a very healthy audience. But you actually have to realize that you might not be that healthy in a couple of years from now, let's say five to 10 to 20 years. As we age, we all increase our risk of disease. And any intervention at that moment in time is not only difficult, but also usually elicits very limited effects. So what I would like to discuss with you this evening is actually a concept that's called primordial disease prevention. Disease prevention much earlier in life. As you are a young audience, maybe you're not that worried and maybe you're even not that interested because you think it's something that may happen in the far future. But I would really like to convince you that it's something that needs attention today and not tomorrow. And I want to try and demonstrate that to you. So first of all, I would like you all to stand up. Please rise. I'm going to ask a couple of questions to which the answer is a simple yes or no. And I will tell you when to sit down. So I will repeat my statement that I just did. I'm assuming you all feel pretty healthy as you stand here today. If you actually feel that your health is not in such a good shape, and I don't mean now at this moment, but just in general, please sit down. If you're a smoker or a vapor, please sit down. If you feel that you might be overweight or worse, or if you're underweight, please sit down. If you or your sibling or one of your parents or one of your grandparents has a chronic disease, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease, or if you, your sibling, your parent, grandparent is taking medication to control blood pressure, cholesterol levels, glucose metabolism. Please sit down. And this is what I thought would happen. So this was about the here and now. It's about you, your siblings, your parents, your grandparents today. Let's make this a little bit more complicated and start to talk about things that happened in the past. If you know that your mom or your dad was a smoker during pregnancy, please sit down. And it's your pregnancy I'm talking about, where you are the result of. If you were born premature, so let's say before 37 weeks of pregnancy, or your birth weight was two and a half kilos or lower, please sit down. If your birth weight was more than 3.8 kilos, please sit down. If you were not breastfed for the first months after birth, please sit down. And now the last one. If your height as an adult today is 10 centimeters or more smaller than the average height of your mom and your dad, please sit down. This was a difficult one. <laughs> so for those still standing, look around you. Because you're the example of primordial disease prevention. You are in a situation where the development of risk factors that increase your risk to develop a disease later in life were actually prevented. So now you may sit down and I will explain to you in a little bit more detail. So what if I tell you that what happens during the first thousand days, roughly the moment of conception until two years of age, has a very, very large influence on your risk of disease that happens only in the far future. And this prevention of disease should happen preferably as early as possible. So this window of opportunity, actually the best window of opportunity to prevent disease later in life, 
is these first thousand days, or even better, the first 1500 days, acknowledging the period before pregnancy. This is called primordial disease prevention, and it starts with the health of the mom and the dad, as this determines the health of the sperm, and of the egg, and of the resulting embryo. Then during pregnancy, the health and nutrition status of the mother will actually determine the environment in which the fetus grows. But it will also determine the development and function of the placenta, which is the most important organ that shuttles nutrients from the mom to the baby. During these first thousand days of life, not only your body grows and develops, but all the organs in your body are set up and develop their functional repertoire. And what they develop during this early period in life is actually what you will take with you for the rest of your life. So, for instance, if we talk about the brain, the brain already has 80% of its adult size at two years of age. If all of the, these organs developed properly in early life, they would be able to generate the right response to any challenge that happens later. Of course, it doesn't prevent us from encountering challenges. You may still get sick after an infection, you may still be exposed to air pollutants, you may have other harmful experiences. But if this early life development was properly done and the organs really have developed optimally, you will be better able to find the right answer to any challenge that happens in life. Your body will be better able to generate the right responses and will be resilient. So this early organ development is really important, and it's really this early period in life, the first thousand days, that has a very important influence on your risk of disease in later life. So for instance, we know that the risk of becoming obese is in a large part set by how you develop in early life. And of course, genes are important, but in the case of overweight and obesity, only less than 10% is determined by your genes. The other 90% is how you and your genes interact with the environment. So if your brain has been set up to be less sensitive to satiety signals, your risk of overeating becomes higher. If your pancreas has been set up not to produce and release sufficient insulin, you may have a higher risk to develop diabetes. If you grow fast in early life, you may develop excess adipose tissue that you will excess fat tissue that you will keep with you the rest of your life. If you start small, you may have excess adipose tissue, but on top of that, you may actually develop less muscle tissue. And also, you have a, a serious risk that you will need not reach your target height, which is determined by the height of your mom and dad. So it's really important that this early organ development really happens in the right way, because growth during the first thousand days is fast. It's faster than during any other period in life, including puberty. The nutrients that we expose ourselves to during these first thousand days not only provide the energy and the building blocks for the growth and development of your body and all the organs in the body, but they also actually send signals for how the, the organs in the body need to develop. If you have a lack of specific nutrients or an excess of specific nutrients, the developmental path of the organs will be different and the function of the organ is changed for life. What can we do? Well, it starts with the health of the woman and, and the man before pregnancy. And of course, paying attention to the health within the family. And I'm talking now to you, I think, seeing a lot of future uh, uh, families here. So it's important that the, the health of the mom and dad are well, but also that you keep on paying attention to that uh, during the first childhood years. For instance, breastfeeding is really important. It provides all the nutrients that the child needs in the first few months after birth, and it continues to have a very important contribution to the diet uh, in the period after, but it's also important to the mom, because it reduces the risk of breast cancer. 
But the real challenge comes the moment weaning starts, the moment the child starts to eat the first bites of food. We need to recognize that children need an age-appropriate diet. A small child is not a small adult. The nutrient needs are different. For instance, children need a lot more fat in their diet and far less carbohydrates. And proteins are really important. But as we sit here in our Western society, protein intake in all of our diets is actually on the high side. Then also, fiber intake, as we sit here, for many of us, will not reach the daily recommendations. And we know that this fiber gap already starts to build up from nine months of age. If we provide the right nutrients in early life, we may be able to alter the developmental path. I'm not talking miracles here. We're not talking pharma. We're talking about very subtle changes in the developmental path. But if you take a step back and look at these developmental changes from a life course perspective, you start to see that securing optimal development in early life and maximizing your development, including of all of the organs in your body, has great potential to really maximize your body's resilience, to be able to handle all the challenges of life. And this is your best way to actually prevent the risk of diseases later in life. What is really important is that we recognize the family diet in this and that the family diet needs to meet the different nutrient demands of the, of, of the different family members. The logical question to ask is, what can we do now as we sit here? I think, first of all, what I would like to ask you is stop listening to the next nutrition guru or the lifestyle coach that tells you which diet to follow to become healthier. Any diet that asks you to skip meal moments, like intermittent fasting, or that asks you to ban certain foods that are healthy food, that are nutrient-dense foods, like a ketogenic diet or a paleo diet, is not healthy on the longer term. We need to start acknowledging the power of nutrition, and we need to start to leverage it for ourselves. But more importantly, we need to share with the people around us. We need to send positive messages and help people understand how small changes in nutrition can really have an impact if you take a broader perspective. We can only elicit small changes, but many small changes together will make a difference. They will make a difference for your health today and your health tomorrow. And if we think about the longer-term perspective, I'm talking about the possibility of via nutrition to reduce the risk of disease for all of us as we sit here. And not only that, we unleash the potential to also generate healthier future generations. Thank you very much.